So, back working on the third gen again. It's been ages since I've done anything with this car. It hasn't moved since the last drift day, so I just gave it a wash because it was really muddy and it's still full of stuff. But um, this is the main thing I have to fix. So, <laughs> this wheel's got a bit of a chunk out of it, and in this video, I'll go over how to fix said chunk. So yeah, this car's been sitting for a long time. I'm surprised this tire still holds air because there's like no rim left here. But we'll take the wheel off, we'll get the tire off, and then we'll start working on it. So I've just gone and gotten the tire off the wheel. And have a better look at the damage on it now. You can see that the bead, where it comes around here, it's flat, and then it's all bent down, and then actually continues all the way around. So this piece actually has to be twisted all the way back over. I'm gonna have to try and hit this bead back. So I'm just, I'm just gonna, I guess, I'm just going to start bashing it with a hammer and some pliers and see if we can get it at least close to the right shape again. Yeah, as I expected, it's harder to bend than I expected. I had a feeling that might happen, but that's okay. My plan was if this cracked and came off, which it has, I can now try straighten this separately. And if I really needed to, the other thing I could do is make this piece from scratch, which I want to try and avoid. But it looks like bending it with the spanner, it's getting pretty close. So I'm just going to keep working this piece with the hammer, maybe try squash it in the press a bit, and then we'll move on to the next stage. So unfortunately, despite my best efforts, it cracked into four pieces when I was straightening it. It did have to do a, like a full 90 degree twist, so it was expected to sort of crack because you can only bend aluminium like this so much. But what I've concentrated on is each individual piece is getting this inside bead to be flat. So the outside here, you can see it's still got a wave in it, and most of the pieces have a bit of a wave in them, but the important bit where the tire mounts is flat. So I've gone through each individual bit with a combination of like holding in the vise and twisting it and push squash it under the press and whatever I can to get each piece flat. So now that they're flat I'm going to get the grinder, clean the powder coat off them and give them a good chamfer so I can get a good weld in there and do the same on the wheel. So I've taken this outside just to avoid getting aluminium dust all over my bench. You can see all my pieces, I've got a like a fillet ground on them so I've got a V to get the weld into and I've cleared off all the coating from near the edges. Now I've fixed a wheel like this before, the other one on the car has actually had the same repair done on the other side and like that was five years ago and it's still holding up perfectly but I did that at my old job where we had a water cooled TIG torch and mine is on the air cooled so because this is a big aluminium wheel it works like a big heat sink and pulls all the heat out of the weld so you really need to be able to crank the amps on for a long time to get it hot enough and that's where a water-cooled torch is handy because the torch doesn't start to melt but mine's only like air-cooled or pretty much not cooled. So what I've got is I've got my air gun over here and after I feel the torch getting hot I'm going to take it away and see if I can use the air to try and cool the torch down. And hopefully that'll help me get everything up to temperature to be able to get a good like deep weld onto this. Okay, I went to just give it one more quick adjustment in the press and then broke another piece. So I've ground that one but I'm going to call it at this point as far as the adjustments go because I'm just going to keep making it worse and we'll start getting this welded together. Now to start off with, I'm not going to worry too much about getting deep penetration. I just want this to be tacked in place because it's sort of just balanced there on the clamp. Once I get all the pieces tacked in, then we can actually start filling the weld in. Okay, so these two have been tacked into place. This next piece has like a really obvious chunk that fits into a slot here but it's a few millimetres too far this way. So because these gaps obviously didn't match up perfectly when I welded them together and everything's been a bit bent, I'm gonna grind this one down to shift it across a bit. And as I go and add pieces in, if there's a nice obvious bit that fits together, I'm gonna to adjust by grinding the ends of the bits to get everything to, f to fit in flat to sort of make up for any differences in where it's been welded. By the time I get to the end, the last piece should fit in nicely still. So that one, next one's tacked in. The hardest part of something like this is figuring out how to actually hold these together. Because it's aluminium, it's not magnetic. What I've found is using the G-clamp like this to clamp each section to the next is seems to be the easiest way to do it. At first I was trying to clamp it this way and it wasn't working, so hopefully that works for you if you're trying to do this as well. But that seems like the easiest way. 
So that's the last piece. It pretty much just clipped into place. The gap on this one here is probably a bit big, like it sticks out a slight amount, but that'll all be fixed up when we grind it. The important thing is, is this line along here where the bead is, is nice and straight. There's, that's where the weld has come through, but we'll grind all that back. So this will all be covered in weld and we have to reshape it. But the general shape of it looks straight. The general shape along the bead here looks straight. So I'll tack this last bit in and then we're ready to start beading the whole thing. And it's gone through filler wire fast, that was almost a full length. The torch isn't getting too hot just yet, and it is getting a nice, like, good heat penetration into there. So, we'll keep feeding wire into it until we get to the end. Welder just turned off. Cool, so I think that's about as hot as the welder's gonna be happy getting, so I need to give the welder some time to cool down. Oh no, it was actually the, um, the extension cord tripped the power. We'll give the handle a minute to cool down because it's getting hot to hang on to. All right, so that's all looking pretty solid now. I can see it's penetrated through to the other side in plenty of spots, you can see it coming through, so we've gotten good heat into it. Now we'll flip it over and start the other side. We're going to have a bit of a better look now that we've flipped it over. So you can see here the rim was getting nice and hot. You can see the weld coming through and it's coming through on the small piece. Most of them the weld was coming through on the small piece and not on the other side. That's because obviously this little bit has a lot less ability to absorb heat than the big side does. So with more practice, I should be able to get like a weld bead pretty much appearing on the back side on both sides. But this will definitely be fine for what I'm doing at the moment at least. There you go, pretty happy with how that looks, it all looks very respectable and was getting some good penetration. So I'll go back now and weld all the little bits where they're all joined together. Alright, so I've just finished welding in the, um, the little joints, if the camera wants to focus. I'm pretty much out of tungsten electrode, there's only like that much left, so I've got to go buy some more. But what I'm doing now is, I've done all the hot welding, I'm going to let it cool down. I'm going to come through after this and weld it a bit colder, just to build up where these little divots are and like little dents like this and especially at this edge here where it's got a big chunk out of it just build it up with weld and then when I grind it down it'll help keep it all flat so you know, the top side's not as good as the bottom side but it's definitely going to be strong enough I have no worries driving on this at all. all right, so I just went and picked up some new electrodes I only had this box of like mixed ones I've only ever used thoriated ones but I'm going to give these zirconated ones a go because I just did a quick google at all the differences and these ones are supposed to be good for aluminium on AC so I'm also running a smaller diamond than the one I normally run but we'll see how it goes building up those few low spots, give it a test. Wow it's like super white compared to normal. Oh, seems good. I'll build all these up higher, so I've got something to grind down to reshape the edge of it. So I've done the majority of the grinding. To get any more down into this groove, I need like a flap disc with a curved edge, but that's really just aesthetic. The main bit is this inside edge here. It needs to be flat all the way around, not have any little pits in it. So there's a couple of little spots, like just there, just there where I haven't welded enough, so I'm just going to go back to the TIG and touch those little bits up and then once they're cleaned up I can go to a finer flap disc and get the final shape together. Alright, so I've just given it a final go over with the 120 grit flap disc and a piece of sandpaper. This is the point that I'm going to leave this at because I really just need to be able to put it back on the car and drive again, so this is perfectly happy for me. If you were going for like a repair that looked spotless, what you could do is, depending on how, if there's any little dents here, like you can see there's a very slight low spot just there, you'd put a little bit more weld and then grind it down flat, and at the end you'd use a body filler and then paint it, but I'm not too worried about how it looks. The main thing is, this edge in here 
is straight and free of defects. So you can see there's no wobbles in that bit. There's a few wobbles in this outer lip, which is just aesthetic. And if you're worried, like I said, you'd put some extra bead in there and weld in. But I don't really care. Same for in here. I ground most material out just so the wheel's not super off balance or anything. If you wanted to, you get a die grinder and really shape this nicely. But yeah, and then you get a color match can of paint, paint it up, no one would even know the difference. And obviously, because it's just this outer lip, this wheel is still 99% as strong as it was when it was new. If you'd snapped a spoke and tried to weld it back together, obviously that's a different thing, but this one, I'll go chuck a tire on it, and then it's ready to go back on the car. So the wheel's got the tire and everything mounted back up now. You can see the repaired section. It all looks pretty solid. It holds air, beat it easily. It all, like, I can't spin it because this car is a diff and it's in gear, but, um, it all turns true and everything, so hopefully I get to give it a test run on the weekend, which there should be a video of if I get to drive. And I'll probably see everybody on the next video, so remember to give the video a like if you liked the video, and if you didn't like it, just be like, shit video, and then, yeah, see you on the next video, hopefully. Goodbye.